Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. So guess what won the poll? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, it honestly, it won by a very slim margin, but it did win the poll. Um, and I've got a confession to make to you all. Um, I'm gonna have a confession with the other show that won the other poll too, but um, I have a confession to make to you about this show. So Attack on Titan. Um, this came out as a manga series in 2009, and I actually, way back in like October of that year, read the first chapter of this series. And, you know, that was 11 years ago, or almost 12 years ago. It's been almost 12 years since I read that first chapter. And I remember opening up the manga, reading the first chapter, and I saw something that looked like a giant baby or it looked like a giant person and it ate someone. And I went, hmm, nope. <laughs> and that was the last time I had anything to do with Attack on Titan. And uh, so yeah, I put this on the poll being like, well, the final season's out and it's really, really popular. So maybe, you know, it's been 12 years since I read that first chapter. The only thing I remember is the giant baby thing eating someone and me being like, Nope. <laughs> but I have watched and read other anime and manga since then. Uh, I like to think that I've matured as a person. And I like to think that maybe it's not what I remember it being for the brief moments that I remember. And then it won this poll and I'm like, okay, well, this is really a really good show. And then I told my brother, I was like, oh, yeah, Attack on Titan won the poll. And he went... He went, it's good, but I don't think it's up your alley. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, I'm not telling you anything. So either this is a really good show and you guys are really genuinely excited for me to watch it and discuss it, or this show is terrifying and you all want to see me suffer. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I'm getting banana fish vibes already because my brother was very ominous. He was like, hmm. He was like, oh, Attack on Titan. No, oh, I don't know if you'll, I don't know how you feel about that. I'm like, what does that mean? And he just like slurks into the background and I never see him again. I'm like, what? So yeah, I, I am putting aside my prior reservations from 12 years ago and the series has ended now. I know the manga's ended because the, air, because the news was all a buzz about it. Um, I know the series, the manga ended back in April and I know that the final season, I mean, I don't know how, if you watch anime, how you could avoid the final season being advertised because everybody's like final season and I've done really good with staying away from spoilers I don't know characters the only characters I know who their names are are Levi and Aaron and the only reason I know Levi and Aaron is because other reactors and other shows have referenced them they'll be like oh that's the voice actor for Aaron like I know that Todoroki Shoto Todoroki from My Hero Academia his voice actor is the same as Aaron I believe and then I've heard other people be like oh that's Levi's voice actor from Attack on Titan I, those are the only two names I know. I don't know what this show is about other than Titans. I'm assuming they're the babies that eat people. <laughs> or the giant monsters that eat people. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I was like, oh, well, why not? I'll just get into this show. Maybe it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll be a fun jaunt. Like, cut to 20 episodes later, me saying those words. And I'll probably be, like, in a corner crying. <laughs> but yeah, so episode one is called To You... 2,000 years in the future, the fall of Zigin, Zigashina, uh, Zigenshina. Um, the whole to you thing instantly makes me think of to you someday, which is an episode of Jujutsu Kaisen that's incredibly sad. So anytime somebody says to you, I instantly get sad vibes. So, <sighs> but yeah, so I've been, I was really excited that this show won. I'm also very uh, trepidatious because I'm like, oh, buddy. Who? What am I getting myself into? I don't know. But uh, any any screenshot or fan art I've ever seen of this show, which has not been a lot, but it looks gorgeous. So if anything, and it's Mappa, which Mappa's done Jujutsu Kaisen, Mappa's done Banana Fish. It's they their animation is great. So if anything, it's gonna look really good. But I don't know. This show has such a huge following that it makes me think that it has to be good because y'all wouldn't watch it if it wasn't. So there has to be either the characters or the story. Something's hooking y'all, and I'm really excited by that. So, yes, we're finally going to delve into this, sucker. I It's been 12 years in the making ever since I, I closed the book on that first chapter and said, I'm not watching or reading this series. And here we are 12 years later being like, guess what you are? So, 
We'll see what all the hype is about. But in any case, I hope you all enjoy this reaction. Thank you for joining me on this journey. But yeah, let's let's dive into this, shall we? And see what Romania has gotten herself into. So we're going to start episode one of Attack on Titan here in five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Oh, hey. Hey, show. Um... <laughs> Um, hmm. What have you gotten me into, folks? <laughs> oh, geez, that was, that was, that was, um, that was probably the most brutal first episode of something I've watched in a, a very, very long time. A very long time. Um, wow. Okay. Yep. I was having flashbacks towards the end there, and I was like, huh, yeah, this is all seeming familiar. The, the image of the house and of somebody getting picked up out of the house. I remember that from the manga. I was like, there was somebody getting picked up from the house and being eaten. I don't remember them getting pulled apart and then eaten. I don't remember that part, but I remember someone getting pulled up from the house and then getting eaten and me being like, nope, done with that. Not ever gonna watch or read that again. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, this is so good so far and we're only in episode one, but what? Oh, oh buddy. Okay, so lots of things, lots of things. So there is a, the, the Survey Corps is the ones with the flag that has the flag, the, the blue and the silver emblem. And there's a group of them and their job, I'm assuming, is to go outside the walls. And they said trying to make a base for humanity outside of the walls. And so their job is to take on the Titans. But these Titans are like the size of trees. They are the size of buildings. And they clearly have incredible strength going up against humans. And it, I like already this series is setting up that these humans are normal humans. There's no superpowers. There's nothing like that. It's just human beings with swords and these grapplings and things trying to defy gravity and defy everything to cut these Titans down. And it's clearly a process and it's clearly something they've been working on for a hundred years and have not been successful with because they're still suffering all these casualties. And I got pissed off like this Aaron kid at the guy that was like, we're just, our taxes are going to making them fatter. I'm like, are you seeing what these people are doing for you? So I, I have a feeling with the OP, I'm going to go back and there's going to be a lot that I'm going to have to talk about each episode with the OP. So I'm not going to focus too much on it. There were a couple of moments in this episode that things went by really quickly. And I wanted to kind of go back and, and talk about that. But huh, we didn't get Levi this episode. I That character, we didn't get him. We got, th we got Mikasa. We got Armin and we got Aaron. So we got those three characters there. And Aaron being our protagonist, that Aaron is our, our main protagonist here that is clearly wanting to go outside the walls. And he likens this whole, this system where they've been there a hundred years to being in a cage. Like people have been caged up and they can clearly go briefly outside the walls for a brief moment. Or it looks like, or maybe there's walls within walls, and so they're not totally outside the walls together, firewood and stuff. But, um, hmm. And the idea of them trying to establish. So clearly the Survey Corps are trying to survey and establish a base outside of the walls, and that's not going well. Um, and meanwhile, inside the walls, it's its own little society and its own culture, and people are like, we're safe. And I like that Hans... Hans, when he when Aaron berates him for being drunk, Hans is like, well, look, here's the thing. The reason why I can be drunk and feel okay is because that means we're safe. And then it all comes back to bite him, literally, when he thinks he's going to face the Titan and he gets, a, he gets a view of the scale of things and how big everything is. And then suddenly he's like, oh, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not as brave as I think I am. And so we're just going to, we're going to backtrack and save these two kids like Carla tells him to. But okay, so the beginning of this episode, there was a brief, the flowers, and then Aaron and Mikasa are under the trees. And for a brief second, there is a flashback, and I wanted to go through there. So it looks like there's like teeth gnashing, and there's blood, and there's someone being lifted off the ground. I don't know who. And there's a house with a windmill. There's a house with a windmill, and it cuts away, and there's titans everywhere, and there's blood. There, okay, I want to go back. There's, there's something else there. 
There's something else there. Yeah, there's the windmill of the house. It looked like someone in like royal garb was there too. Someone being left off the ground. There's a man. There's titans there suddenly. There's there's a royal, it looks like, okay, so it's like a, a coat. There's not a person attached to it. It's like a, a, a uniform that a, like a royal soldier or a king would wear. And then there's a nursery and there are toys in the nursery and there's a flower and there's red and green banners. And then there's like, like a, a wasp and there's bugs. And then there's someone, someone's eyes are kind of like Aaron's in there. Um, and then there's, there's the Titan that killed, it looks like the Titan that killed the mom, kind of. And there's something being pulled out, which looks like the mom later getting pulled out. So like, is it a vision? And then Aaron wakes up and they're outside the walls, or maybe they're in like a little villagey part here with the windmills and everything. So maybe they are still within the walls. It's just outside of, hmm, hmm. So the question is, did Aaron have a vision or was it something from his past? Because here's the thing, the dad is the doctor and I find it interesting that they said there's an epidemic within the walls and the dad is a doctor and he saved all the people and so they kind of, People know Aaron just because they know his family. They know his doctor because his doctor's pretty well known. Um, Mikasa, so it's established that she's not his sister, that she's been entrusted, which it makes sense. I'm assuming that there's a lot of people in this city within the walls that are like this, where they, um, that there's a lot of people within the city that, I don't know, have lost family or loved ones, either to the Survey Corps or whatever, or to... Because they let them outside the walls to get firewood and things, and there's little houses and stuff outside the walls, but then there also are titans outside the walls. So I'm guessing, like, live outside at your own risk sort of thing. Um, however that works. Hmm. Or maybe they just go outside to just gather things and bring it back inside the walls. Hmm. I'm curious to know more about this world. Um, and I think when the preview is shown, we'll get more with that. Um, and you can see all the booze bottles sitting there. But, so yeah, because the dad, the doctor, has the golden key on his neck. And it was so, like, ominous, foreshadowing that he's like, whenever I get back, we'll, I'll show you what's in the basement. But the house just got destroyed. So the question is, is Aaron going to go back and see what was in the basement now that the house has been destroyed? Is he going to go back and get the thing from the basement? And then if he meets up with his father one day, he'll open it. I'm assuming it's like a treasure chest or something. Um... So that's the question. Is it a chest and like an item that he can open and he's going to go back and see the dad and he's going to have the dad open it later? Or was it like a room, like the basement, and now that the house is destroyed, is Aaron going to go back and see that without the dad knowing or the dad's consent because he had the key to open it? Hmm. But yeah, that, that was very ominous. Like as soon as the dad's like, whenever I get back, son, it's like, well, that's the last time we'll see you. So I, I'm sure we'll see the dad again. But he said he was going to be gone a couple days. So it's like, where would you go? Where do you, where do you go if you're going to be gone a couple days? Like, I guess within the city, because it's a city. So I guess there's, you know, lots of things to do. And they established that there's a government. So maybe he was going, since he's a well-known doctor, maybe he was going to see the government. I don't know. Like an official, a politician, somebody. But Aaron's, Aaron's character is instantly relatable, too, because he's frustrated that everybody's complacent. Like, he's like, the walls could be breached. Shouldn't we be training and focusing on things? And it's clear that Han's division is not in charge of something like that. Like, Han's division with the roses, they're just like, they watch the gates. They just keep the peace. They're not the actual, it's like different branches of the military. Like, their job is to keep the stuff inside the walls, not go outside the walls. And so you can tell that range of experience when he thinks he's going to face the Titan and then it's like, mm, doesn't work. Mm. And Mikasa, I like her character a lot because she has kind of like the big sister vibes, even if she's not his actual sister. She's like his caretaker watching over him. Um, and she just has that sisterly uh, vibe to her. And she's like, look, you know, why would you want to join this core that they have so many people die? And that thing with the mom, oh my God, that was from the start, like, ugh, that was gut-wrenching. Like her kid, it's just like, it's the very realness of when you go to war and I can't believe they brought back his arm. I guess that's like, this is all we retrieved of him. 
that wasn't eaten, and it's like, ugh. The fact that these titans eat people is gross and disturbing and very, it, it's like, it's like zombies on steroids, you know? It's like, cause the whole time they're outside pressing up against the wall, it reminded me of The Walking Dead so much, where those, especially like the third season of The Walking Dead, where they're like against the gate of the prison. And it, it reminds me of The Walking Dead so much, cause in The Walking Dead, in the third season, they're in like a prison and that's where they hold up because that's where they're safe. There's a perimeter gate and the zombies can't get through it. And the zombies are constantly pressing against it and they're just holding them back. But there is this sense of claustrophobia and the people are like, and you, and some of the characters are like, it's like a prison. It is a literal prison. We can't escape because outside we're going to get killed. So we're stuck here and we just have to mend the walls and keep everything secure so that we can survive. And it's the same thing here. Like the walls, even though it looks like this nice peaceful city, Aaron's like, why are we living if we are stuck and trapped inside here our whole lives? Like, what's the point? And... You can empathize, but then when you see what these things do outside the walls, it's like, oh, maybe you shouldn't go outside the walls because that seems a bit dangerous. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, I love that these people coming back and when that guy sees the kid excited, he almost looks away like he's ashamed. He's like, why would you be excited? Like, this is nothing that you should be happy about. People have been injured. People have died. And we did. We And the one guy says, we haven't learned anything. We still don't know what they are. Like, we don't know what these Titans are after a hundred years. We're just the status quo. It's like we're just raising and training people. And I'm assuming that these people that are in the cores are kind of, that are in the survey core are people that have lost loved ones. So they have a vengeance. They have a, a sense of revenge that they want to extract on the Titans. And that's why they're in that group to begin with. Because otherwise, unless you're just self-sacrificing, you just want to help protect the people, why would you be in it? That was a rough, the thing with the mom, that was, and Moses, that was woof. So then we, obviously, so we get to this little thing that's like a halfway point, and I wanted to pause it here because they were, there was all this text, and I was like, I can't read it that fast. What are we doing? So I want to get to this, and I like that she knocks him out down, and uh, he picks up the sticks and everything. And the, I love that little quiet moment. Okay, so we have three walls here information we can share so far. I like the show's like, well, here's what we can tell you so far. Not much. Um, about the walls. There are three, there are, humanity lives within three walls. Okay. So the outermost wall is wall Maria. The second wall is wall Rose. And the third wall, innermost wall is wall Cena. So the wall Rose, I'm assuming that that's the Rose, the guards that were the Rose. They're the guards of the second wall. Okay. So the outermost wall, there's still walls there. It's walls, it's cities within cities. So the outermost wall is probably where Aaron and them started out at gathering the sticks and stuff was around Wall Maria. And then the second wall was Wall Rose, which is the wall that they had to pass through to get inside the city. And that was where Hans stopped them and everything. That makes sense. And then Wall Cena, I'm assuming that Wall Cena is where the royalty and all the family houses themselves. Because then what do we get here? Okay, yeah. So there's a giant field. And then the distance between each is roughly the same. 100 kilometers separates Maria and Rose. And 130 separates Rose and Cena. And from Cena to the center is about 250 kilometers. So it all just kind of tricks up. It's kind of, it reminds me of Gondor. It, uh, it reminds me of, of, of Gondor in Lord of the Rings. Where it's just the city that's protected from the orcs and everything from the outside too. And it all just builds up to the center. So... I'm assuming that where this story mostly takes place at is around that rose wall. So interesting. And then there's the giant field, which is where the giants are. Interesting. That's, I want to talk about that here in a minute because there's something very strange. And I'm going to say first and foremost, I should have said this from the start. It's going to be really hard, I know, for y'all not to spoil me because this show has been going on for so long that I'm sure most of you are like, we want to spoil you, Rom Romania. Please don't. <laughs> I know this is going to be so difficult to talk about. Um, and you guys are probably sitting there going, oh my God, she has no clue. She has no clue. And I don't, but I know it's going to be really hard to, to not spoil, but oh man. Mm, mm. And the, the, the thing of the flowers and everything like the animation is gorgeous in the show. It's so pretty. Like the blending of CGI and the 2d it's really, really well done. Um, so then we get Armin. 
arm and this kid and this kid he's got a mouth on him and he he, he speaks real quick tongues loose lips sink ships uh he he speaks like really he's like very smart alky and very quick witted and he's like well then you just admitted i won right and he doesn't seem like a very physically strong person but he's very smart and so he instantly, and he's very observant and perceptive because he recognizes instantly Aaron can't look back and see that, that Mikasa is following him and that's what scares those guys away. Um, but Armin notices. And Armin has very similar ideals to Aaron. They both feel the same way, like they should be able to go outside the walls. But Armin is kind of, seems more, Armin seems like a mixture between Mikasa and Aaron. Like Mikasa is pretty much resigned to the fact that this is how things are. We shouldn't mess with the status quo. We should just keep ourselves safe. Aaron is like, no, upset the status quo. We need to go outside the walls. We need to do things. And Armin is kind of like riding that middle ground where he's like, I get where you're coming from, Aaron, but also, and he's like, that's why they call me a heretic because I'm, I want to go outside the walls like you do, Aaron. But also, it's there's been peace for 100 years within the walls. So do we really, if we go, if we venture out too much, we're risking letting them in. So there's clearly a reason behind the system. So should we upset that? So he's kind of like a middle ground, a middleman between Mikasa and Aaron's ideals. And then we, we tie into the opening. And here's the thing that's weird. It's like it, and I'm assuming that I'm not lost on the atomic bomb parallel. I'm not lost on that because there's this moment, I don't know if you guys have seen Barefoot Gin. Uh, it's a movie about World War II, and in Barefoot Gin, it's, um, it's very disturbing. But in the movie, it, there's a moment when the atomic bomb hits um, Hiroshima. Or it's not Hiroshima, it's the first target that it hit. That it, um, it, it explodes, and there's a moment where in the explosion, like time seems to freeze, and sound stops, and everyone's kind of frozen in place when the bomb hits and it's very, it's visually amazing and disturbing. And that was very reminiscent of this part where everything, like the wind dies down, like the wind dies down and there's no sound. And it's just these two birds flying through the air. And then there's a flash of lightning of something. There's a flash that happens and it like knocks everybody down. And it's like, what the heck? And there's like smoke and this flash and it looked like lightning, but it didn't look like lightning at the same time. It's like, what the heck? Um, and that's when this giant ass Titan appears. It's like 50 meters tall. And it's like, what is happening? Um, yeah. So, and everybody's like, oh my God. And clearly, clearly the Titans that they're used to seeing are the ones that are like the size of buildings, which is still terrifying. But this thing is like 50 meters tall. And that's insane. Like that's half the, 50 meters is half the width between the walls of each part of the city. So that's crazy. And, and it has like all the muscles and everything and like the skeleton and the muscles, whereas the other Titans are all just like Play-Doh and flesh. It's creepy. It's very, very creepy. And he, and I thought it was another Titan at first when, but it's his foot pulled back and he kicks the wall in. So it's like he made the hole for the Titans to get inside. And this was the wall, Maria. So the outermost wall is what falls, right? Right? Cause okay. Yeah. What was that outer? Cause it shows him kicking the wall. I'm trying to get a context for all of this that he kicks. So the, I'm looking at the head of the woman in the thing. Like it's the head, the hair is kind of down loose in a loose braid. In a loose braid. And if I go back and look, that looks like, um, what is it? I'm going to go back and look. If it looks like any of the wall. It looks like wall Maria. So it looks like the one that, that is the outermost wall. Okay. I was going to ask, I was like, it makes sense for the Titan to be on the outermost wall, but if it was going to be at the second wall, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. How did it get there? And so, ah. okay. And then yeah, chaos ensues and Armin is like frozen from fear. And then these Titans are disturbing looking. They're so creepy. So super creepy. I don't like it at all. Nope. And then just smiling, like looking, like smiling and looking. No, mm-mm, mm-mm. 
And they try to rescue the mom, and the mom's like, I can't run even if you do. And that's so heartbreaking when Aaron's like, I'll carry you. And it's she's like, you can't get out. And she begs Hans to take them away. And it's like, oh, and like his finger's bleeding, trying to lift it up. And you can just see her panicking. And the moment where she's like, she's about to scream, don't go, because she doesn't want to lose her kids. But at the same time, she's like, you have to go, because otherwise you're going to die. And it's like, oh, my God. And Mikasa, like, already knows it's it's not going to work. Uh, and the creepy thing about these Titans is they're not fast. They're not fast. They just slowly move, but they're so big and strong that it's just, it's disturbing. It's like a zombie, only, uh, mm -mm. Mm -mm. So Hans gets them away. That was just, the, the orchestra and the animation and the tension, like, this is episode one, guys. This is episode one. Um, I, oh, it, this, this has got me. I'm so intrigued. I'm disturbed, but I'm intrigued. I, ooh, 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 buddy. Oh, man. But yeah, so Aaron, we, I mean, Aaron's character is pretty clear from the get-go that, and from the preview, that he's gonna, yeah, this is definitely gonna shape his, if he was not already against the Titans and fighting in the Survey Corps, this is gonna get him in it. Because, I mean, he's gonna wanna be in the Survey Corps, and Mikasa, Mikasa's not gonna let him be alone, because she knows it's her duty to watch over him, like a big sister, and so, mm -hmm, yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna follow him too, and I'm assuming Armin's gonna get ranked. I, I feel bad, because Armin does not seem like the type of person that would do well in the Survey Corps, because of how he is, but, uh, and I'm like, they just walk around until they find people. I'm like, why? But why? Oh, uh, God, that was disturbing. That was so disturbing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and just the lighting and the sunset and just, uh, and then the blood spattering and it just like slowly the blood going in slow motion. And this, is, this Titan looked like a woman too. It's like, uh, oh, and Mikasa has to turn away. She can't look, but but Aaron does. Okay, I know it's gonna be hard for you all not to spoil me, so I I beg of you to humor me and watch me suffer <laughs> and watch me in torture as I suffer through this. But oh my god, oh my god, this is just this is crazy. This is crazy, y'all. Um, so yeah, so that was, uh, episode one of Attack on Titan. This may be the, the longest opening discussion I've ever had for an anime, and I have a feeling it's going to get crazier from here. Um, uh -huh. Whew. so I've also noticed that the seasons on this are all over the place. Like this first season's 24 episodes. The second season's only 12 episodes. The third season is like 18 or 20, 22 episodes, and the four seasons so far is 16, so it's all over the place. But that's fine. That's fine. It's all good. <laughs> so yeah, so that was episode one. I, I debated for a long time whether I should watch one episode at a time or two episodes at a time. I debated it for a long time because a lot of I know a lot of people are going to be impatient and want me to get immediately caught up. But um, after doing a 53 minute long <laughs> reaction for this episode one, I, I think I'm going to have to do it episode one, epi one episode at a time, guys, because otherwise I, I'm not going to be able to like focus. <laughs> so thank you all for humoring me and thank you for joining me on this journey. I have a feeling this is going to be very, very interesting. And I know a lot of you that have watched this series from start to finish, there's obviously going to be twists and turns and developments as this series goes on. And those of you that already know everything that's going to happen, you guys get to watch me suffer. <laughs> so, because I have no clue. And I'm going to stay with no clue until I get through this. So, I'm excited. But, in any case, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. Thank you for watching. And yeah, uh, have a wonderful week. Stay safe from Titans Outside the Wall. And uh, I'll be back next week with episode two of Attack on Titan. Bye.